Yo, yo! How's it going, everyone? New place, new time, up the Ahariri this time. Oh, I've never been in this valley before. It's um, already it's looking real good. I've come up just with the camera this time. I haven't bothered taking the bow, so a little bit of research that I did do suggested that no animal numbers were pretty low, so left the long bow at home and just carried the the cameras in. Yeah, weather's looking pretty good. In here for two nights. I'm also no, going to be using the, the trip to try out a new bivvy bag that I bought a few weeks ago. After our trip, our tar trip in the Landsborough where we made the decision to stay out overnight without any camping gear, using our survival blankets, it got me thinking about, you know, the, the gap between a full size tent and a survival blanket, and of course that's your bivvy bag category, so did a bit of more research and Ended up buying a MacPack, uh, I think it's called Bush Cocoon. It's made out of event fabric. So, yeah, pretty lightweight. Not as lightweight as Greg Kagel's homemade shelters, but should be pretty good, I reckon. We'll see how it goes. Just give you a quick scan around of this Ahariri country. How will you let me in if you are ready? How do I reach you? again have to apologize for the lack of footage on the walk in here it was raining most of the time so this bloody camera I use isn't weather sealed so didn't get it out much at all but we're up in the head of the basin now fantastic country I can't say I've any seen any sign yet but we crossed one side creek just back down there and there was the skeleton of a dead tar. Well, I suppose any skeleton's going to be dead, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, dead tar in the, one of the side creeks there under a waterfall, so not sure what that means. Uh, we're just about up at the rock bivy and sit up there and do a bit of glassing, hopefully. As long as this weather holds off. Have a quick look down the river, or down the gully rather. It's looking down where we've come up this afternoon. Nice country. Catch you later. Uh, it's just about to pack up at our wee rest stop there. I just had a very quick glass around and picked up a mob of tar. Looks like nannies and juveniles up in that gun sight saddle there. I'm using the 400mm lens at the moment, so they're <laughs> pretty far away. But nonetheless, game animals sighted. Awesome. There's something to target tomorrow now. day two. The rain and clag has finally cleared. It rained a lot last night. That's the rock bivy we stayed in there. Someone had left an old tent fly under the rock overhang so we used that to keep the wind and rain out. This is the head basin. Just done a bit of glassing while I was eating breakfast and spotted a, 
a lone bull tar. It's up in that saddle centre right. So I think we're going to put in a stalk later on, see if we can get close to him. Magnificent country. Alright, we've started the climb up to that tar I saw earlier. The daytime thermals just kicked in as well, so we're going to have to stay to his right and then hopefully get up to his level and then sidle across to where I saw him last. That's the plan anyway. Well, we're about three quarters of the way up to the top ridge now. And I, I can't locate that bull tar again. He was over in the centre of the screen there this morning, but gee, I can't pick him up now. So I think we might just do a wee detour into the country behind us, or behind the camera here. Have a look over the top ridge and see what's over there. And we can always come back to this guy later in the day if need be. Hopefully pick him up later on. She's all good. I've reached the top ridge here. It's um, about 1,700 metres. And that's what it looks like on the other side. A bit claggy, but that's looking down into the main Ahariri Valley. Believe in love, give me a feeling. If you believe in me, hold me and let me in. If you are ready, I'm gonna reach you. I've got a feeling you're gonna reach me too. Typical New Zealand small bird, they never stay still. Ah, oh, there he's down there. Excellent, look at that. Gobbling up and down. Awesome. Oh, that was an awesome wee encounter. Not every day you see rock wrens, let alone get good photos and video of them. We were just sitting here having our lunch and my friend heard what she, well she didn't know what it was, went and had a look and yeah, a couple of uh, rock wren. Managed to get an image of, a couple of images of one with a worm in its mouth. But um, now that this clags dissipated you get a better view of the Ahariri down in there now this river flats and bush and tarry looking bluffs awesome that bull tar I saw this morning has given me the slip I've walked all the way over uh, to where I saw him this morning after having glassed it Glass the area he was in most of the day. I kind of walked over here hoping he might have been in a nook or a cranny that I couldn't see into, but I can't find him anywhere now. Never mind. Consolation prize with the rock wren images. Not to be sneezed at. Our rock bivy is down there somewhere, in the middle of the picture somewhere. <laughs> and that's the head basin. Okay, I'm standing exactly where I saw that bull this morning, and the only place he could have gone without me seeing them throughout the day's glassing is up in that gully there and up over the top. So I don't know. He might have been travelling. Anyway, one more corner to look round and then back to camp I think. Big snow field, oh actually it's an ice field. Permanent ice up in there. Probably can't see it on the video but it's a real nice blues. 
and it. I just got back to camp and after having a brew had another quick glass round and spotted a small mob up under that waterfall there. I'll just zoom back and um, show you where they are. Crazy big rock face. contrast from the Aherere, eh? I have to put in another apology for the abrupt ending on that Aherere trip. I had intended doing this uh, bivvy bag review on the morning we were to walk out, which was after the second night, um, having spent two nights in this, but it was raining all day and uh, didn't manage to get that done, let alone get any footage of the walk out as I intended, but anyway. Hopefully this free review we review might make up for that. Um, like I was saying, uh, when we stayed out overnight up the Landsborough without any camping gear, I started thinking about that gap between a full-size tent and your survival blanket, and then started researching bivy bags. And after much research, decided on this MacPack bush cocoon. But you know. When I was doing all that research, um, you know, it's pretty obvious that not all bivy bags are the same. You get the the bivy bag types that are just quite simply a bag, basically, um, and they are very, very lightweight. But that's exactly what they are—just a bag, and um, pretty. I mean, there's no room for comfort or convenience they're basically just a bag you crawl into from the top end um, no room for gear inside of course you can't cook in it so pretty basic setups but the advantage they have is that they're super lightweight some of them are down around 200 gram but like I say they're just a 200 gram bag made of waterproof material or supposedly waterproof material and the other thing over the years I've struggled with and I think most people do is condensation whether it be inside a bivy bag or in a tent. I've had quite a few tents over the years and every single one of them struggles with condensation. If you got a, a genuine double walled tent that uh, condensation always forms on the inside of the outer fly and so the, your inner tent remains dry. And I've always um, steered away from the, the the tent designs which have the inners made out of mesh. It's all very well to, to gain you know, a lightweight tent, but you get that condensation forming on the inside of the fly. 
that starts dripping down and if you haven't got a an inner that's not mesh sorry if you've got an inner that's made out of mesh that water is just going to drip down through it that's why I prefer genuine double walled tents you're sacrificing the weight of course but I reckon it's a, a good trade-off to stay absolutely completely dry so to this thing here first night I set it up under the rock bivy uh, it was raining and howling winds so I set it up under the rock bivy and uh, I was getting a lot of a lot of water dripping off the roof of the, the bivy so um, although it wasn't genuine rain it was getting very wet and I'm pleased to say that it it stayed leak proof all night now the very surprising thing <laughs> and something I was absolutely stoked with I um, that first night under the rock bivy I left this flap open about, I don't know, six inches at the head end here and I was <laughs> wrapped in the morning to find absolutely zero condensation on the inside of this thing. So that was pretty cool. The second night I took it outside in the open knowing it was going to rain during the night and it did <laughs> quite a bit. And this time I just to test it out I zipped that completely up and once again in the morning absolutely dry on the inside no condensation whatsoever and the I think it worked out about five or six hours of rain during the night um, this thing just shed it and I was completely dry inside so waterproof and no condensation I thought that was pretty amazing and I'm sure it's due to this event fabric. I've seen tests and studies done on uh, event versus Gore-Tex versus all these other supposedly breathable waterproof membranes. And event fabric always came out on top in both waterproofness and their breathability. So that's what I'm putting the lack of condensation issue down to is the breathability of event. It has got a vent at the top end here but it's pretty small and there's nothing at the tail end so there's it's not as if it's got air flowing through it um, so yeah it's pretty bloody good I thought and the beauty of this this um, hooped bivy bag design is that they have more room than the, the straight out bags um, as you can see, there's um, the headroom, there's truckloads of room. Not that you could fit a pack in there, but you could definitely fit quite a few clothes, your headlamp, uh, your boots if you needed to. I'm six foot two, and I use an extra long Extherm, Thermarest Extherm seeping mat, and I can fit in there comfortably with heaps of room to spare. The, my sleeping bag touches the sides a wee bit at the foot end but the top end um, there's no no touching the sides whatsoever so down to some specs the all up weight is 970 grams the floor is made out of 40 denier ripstop nylon which isn't all that thick but you know any thicker and you're going to get up there in weight so I guess everything's a compromise the behind the outside a vent door flap is a bug screen so if you're out on a, a fine night you know there's no need to to use that outer screen just a mesh if you want keep the bugs out little tabs here to fold the the doors away if you want to roll them up the zip has got uh, quite a good I don't know you guess you call it a guttering or a flap over the zip so the water doesn't seep in through there and all the seams are tape sealed from the inside so that's another good feature yeah so it comes with um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pegs and, and the hoop pole but at the tail end here, there's 
a little sleeve that can take either a stick or some sort of pole just to lift the foot end up. What I did was um, got an old carbon arrow and cut that down to length. Um, being carbon, it's, there's no weight to it whatsoever. And yeah, just prop that in the little sleeve to um, to raise the foot the foot well there. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, the the rolled size is 38 centimeters by 13 centimeters, and it fits into this bag here quite nicely, as you can see. Pretty, pretty compact size, and yeah, 970 grams all up. Not too bad. The tabs here, the uh, the peg tabs, they're only uh, webbing straps, but the you know the sewing in the the workmanship seems pretty good. It looks pretty sturdy and not likely to tear away at all. Most of the seams got double stitching on them, and um, yeah, pretty good. But like I say, the main feature for me was the lack of condensation on two nights. Uh, one of those nights I had the thing completely zipped up. Pretty stoked. So just one more thing. Um, <laughs> I'm a bugger for that, always trying to improve what's already probably a good product I um, got an old fly off uh, the MacPack Microlite tent that I used to have and cut it up and made this uh, kind of veranda I think it weighs 150 grams or something just a uh, just a covered area if you want to cook from within inside your bivvy bag um, there's no room inside the bivvy bag to cook whatsoever apart from being a bloody health hazard <laughs> so this is what I came up with just two extra pegs is all that's required the tripod which I've always got with me is propping it up and um, yeah covered the area to cook your meals or make a brew in wet weather I haven't tried that out yet but I reckon the theory's good <laughs> bit more protection from the elements anyway so there you have it Hope you enjoyed that and got some value out of it. The next video you see will probably be of our 2018 raw trip. Doing a week long trip into the Marlborough backcountry. So keep an eye out for that. Cheers. See you later.